All right, now I'm going to talk about a new topic called Navier-Stokes equations, okay? So I just want to let you know that the majority of this topic is actually covered in a graduate level fluid dynamics course. I teach a course called Advanced Fluid Dynamics, and in that course I focus on these. But I, want, I just want to give you some flavor as well as apply to a few cases where I believe will be useful for you in your career. The first thing, I would like you to visit video 9.1, okay? It's a 20 minute video and over there what I did was I did the differential form of the conservation of momentum equation, okay? And I came up with these three sets of equations, okay? And some people also call this general differential equation of motion, okay? Because it's still f is equal to ma, I just want to uh, highlight over here. So this part is the force divided by volume. This part is ma divided by volume, okay? And also, I have another video. Uh, by the way, I will put links to this in the YouTube channel. I'm not sure how it's going to work in the canvas. So just in case, I'm writing over here. So please just search my channel with C video 9.1. It will pop up. And please take a look at video 4.5. Again, I'm going to put a link in the video. But I did derive these three components from scratch in this particular video. So that's like a 10 minute video. This is like a 20 minute video. So you can see that this is a lot of conversation going on behind the scenes. And I'm going to pick up from here. No need to explain the same thing over and over again okay but as a just a reminder to you in module 9 what I did was I went one step ahead and I said hey if this is inviscid okay uh, what happened was for instance in a two-dimensional flow the shear stress will be like this del u del y plus del v del x right but the thing is we said that this is zero because inviscid means viscosity is equal to zero so all these shear stresses vanished in that particular case. X, Y, Y, X, Y, Z, Z, Y, X, Z, Z, X. And also I drive and I showed you that these tau X, X, the primary stresses this time around, will be minus P, minus due to the fact that the pressure compressive is positive. Okay? And I plug this in and I get you something called the Euler's equation. That's section 9.2. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go one step above. Actually, it's a significant step above. I will not be assuming in visit. I will be looking at viscous flows. Okay, viscous. Note that in this undergraduate class, I will only look at the Newtonian fluids. Okay, Newtonian is what I'm going to look. I'm not going to look at the non-Newtonians. That's... Again, definitely graduate level. What I, this time around, what will happen is, if you look at the shear stresses, they will not vanish. And I can write it over here that tau xy will be equal to tau yx. That will be, actually I wrote it up there, right? Del u del y plus del v del x, right? They, they are the same. Look at these two are the same. Why? Well, it's symmetric, right? That's why, uh, you know, that's at least one good thing happening for us. Let's look at tau yz will be equal to tau zy. It's going to be viscosity. Um, actually, let me give you a hint. Let's see, x and y. So this is the velocity in the x with respect to y. Velocity in the x with respect to y. Plus velocity in the y with respect to x. So it's going to be del v del z plus del w del y. If I have zx, xz, this will be viscosity times del del u del z plus del w del x so this takes care of six let's look up up over here you will see that i have one two three four five six seven eight nine of them right and this is a matrix when we did it it's called a stress tensor right and i take care of all the shear stresses down How about the primary stresses tau xx will be equal to minus p plus 2 viscosity times del u del x plus 2 nu del v del y and the last term is tau z z will be equal to minus p plus 2 nu times del w del z okay 
So explanation of this is not that simple, I'll be honest. Okay? And an undergraduate book, the one that I'm using, for instance, Manson Young Okishi's undergraduate books doesn't even discuss this. And typically it's a graduate level, so I'm not going to um, derive this for you. But you can see it's um, at least to make some sense. Well, I said that look at this yx, right? So look at it. If this was xx, then this will be ux, then this will be again ux, and so two, two, two times. You see, that's where it's coming from. And, and also, if you look at the pressure, well, remember? Pressure, it's over here. So it's the same thing. And also what I want to show you here is, let's take a look at these equations. What happens to this if viscosity is equal to zero? This becomes zero. This becomes zero because I'm multiplying zero, zero times something. It's zero. Well, let's up, look up there. Same. How about the primary stresses? Viscosity is zero. This gone, this gone, this gone. So I get minus P. Look up there. Minus P. Okay. So then what I'm going to do is basically, let's look at the first one. So I'll pick up this and plug over here, right? You can see over here, video 4.5 explains this in detail. And then what I will do is, in, in, in basically, I will pick up tau xx, insert here, tau yx, I'll insert here, tau zx, I will insert here, and see what happens, okay? Um, let me write it in the x direction for you. So it's going to be rho, del u, del t, plus u, del u del x plus v del u del y plus w del u del z will be equal to minus del p del x plus rho g x plus on the right hand side viscosity times del square u del x square plus del square u del y square del square u del z square okay so this is the first one and the sec this is the x direction let's write the y direction over here so you'll see rho del v del t plus u del v del x plus v del v del y plus w del v del z will be equal to minus del p del y rho g y plus viscosity of del square v del x square plus del square v del y square plus del square v del z square and close the parentheses okay and that will be a third one let me write it for you i'll be right back okay so i wrote you the z direction as well to save some time for you okay so let's take a look at these equations. Okay, let's start with the x. Typically, that's what we talk about. So this is the acceleration in the x direction. Okay, it's coming from video 4.5. Nothing new. Okay, it's basically this copied down there. Okay, all right. Del p del x. This is the pressure gradient in the x direction. Rho g x. This is the gravity in the x direction. Right. So take a look. Gravity in the x. Down here, gravity in the y, gravity in the z. It's rarely that you're going to not align your gravity one of the axes, right? So if you do that, actually, two of these gravity will be zero. One component will be, if I'm using SI, it's going to be minus 9.8, right? Or if I'm using British gravitational, it's going to be 32.2, right? So that's something to note. And this part, let's say, what happens if this is zero, right? Invisible. So this drops out. And if I look at this first line, I did it on purpose over here, this is actually the Euler's equation. You can look at as video 9.2. The only thing that means the difference between the Navier-Stokes equations, these are Navier-Stokes equations, and the Euler's equations are that there is this, this term. That's the only difference between those two. Unfortunately, though, mathematically speaking, this makes the life so much more difficult, okay? mathematically speaking. Because uh, already this is PDE, partial differential equations, and this is nonlinear, so it's very hard to uh, actually apply this and find an analytical solution. Most of the times so what we have to do is we have to go through the computer's assistance. Typically the computational fluid dynamics is where we put our effort in, okay? Uh, but you can see over here, this is the acceleration in the y direction, and symmetric, right? Del p del y was del p del x up there, rho g y was rho g x over there, and over here, 
delta square, you see every time I see u, I write v, u, v, u, v, okay? And same thing for the z, I'm not going to repeat myself, okay? So these, uh, again, are very, very important equations. They are called Navier Stokes equations. I did write them only for the Cartesian coordinate. What is the most common geometry that you know of? Just make up something in your mind right now. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking of pipe. Can I apply Cartesian? Yeah, I can, but that's not preferred. It will make my life so much harder. I need to do something called cylindrical polar coordinates. And it's going to have R, theta, Z directions. And I will write it over here, and I'll be right back. I don't want you to waste your time. Okay, I'm back. I wrote them. And, okay, I don't have any good news, but I'll show you it is what it is. In cylindrical polar coordinates, it is in the R direction, it is in the theta direction, here is in the Z direction. Okay, so I'll go over them. I actually have a handout that I distribute in the class, okay? R direction is this. You can see that it is similar, the first term is similar to the Cartesian coordinates, VR with respect to T, right? But then it it gets a little bit different. See, you have a V theta over R here, even a minus V theta squared divided by R. There's no derivative or partial over here, right? And the right-hand side, this still, the, this is familiar. This is familiar. This is familiar, but inside of this bracket is much more complicated. And unfortunately, you can see in here, this term is fairly complex. And we will actually go ahead and solve, because I have to draw, I have to draw equations for you for the viscous flow in pipes, okay? So you can compare this. Uh, we will approach this from this angle, okay? Um, theta direction, similarly kind of messy, right? Concepts are similar. I still have, this is the acceleration. This is my, the pressure gradient. This is the gravity times uh, density. Viscosity times this thing. If the viscosity is zero, this parenthesis is gone, right? This becomes the Euler's equation in theta direction. If I go to Z direction, the direction is relatively speaking easier than the others, theta and r directions. And you can see here I get myself something like this. And this inside of especially the last term over here is a little bit more. I'm not saying it's easy. Easier is what I'm trying to indicate. Next, what I want to do is I want to talk about the boundary conditions. Because what happens is when I'm solving, let's say, the z direction over here, that's the closest one, you will see that I will most likely take, will take integrals. And when I take integral, I'm going to get integration constants. So in order to obtain that, I need some boundary conditions. So I'm going to just briefly summarize for you so you're familiar with it. Let's say that I have some kind of a solid over here, right? So what I'm going to say is, let's say that this is the S, is the tangent. You can look at the streamline uh, video. I have done the same one as well, N and S, okay? Um, S is the tangent and N is normal, as you can imagine. I mean, we talked about this. There's something called no-slip condition. So the Vs will be equal to the U, which is the velocity of the solid, okay? If the solid is stationary, this will be zero, okay? So let's write it in here, velocity of the solid surface. Tangential velocity component, right? Obviously, I don't have to say this. But Vn, in a normal condition, it is zero, right? Because it cannot go through a solid boundary. But there are some cases, um, like air filters in your air conditioning system, air passes through it, right? So that may be a case, or I can call this, and alternatively, Vn can be P, the velocity is penetration. Um, so I'm going to call this penetration velocity. Okay? This is a very common boundary condition. I will have a solid, and I uh, think about the real-life applications. I always have some kind of a solid that this fluid is touching, so I need to take advantage of this existence. Okay? The second one is less obvious to you. It's called the free surface. We talk about this. Okay? So we indicate by upside down triangle, right? What will happen is um, there will be no slip between the water and air. If I'm talking about, let's say this is water, and that's air, there will be no slip. Okay? So if the water, you know, let's call this uh, V liquid, let's call this V um, gas, well, Vg will be equal to Vl, is what I'm trying to say over here, okay? At the interface, these will be the same. 
And another one that is very, very important is the shear stresses at that interface will be the same, same as well. I will take advantage of this, you will see. Okay, um, so basically the forces must balance, that's where it's coming from. And if I don't have any external forces, sometimes we do on the free surface, that's a rare case though, okay. In addition to all this, there is another thing that I need to cover that's called uh, laminar, turbulent, and transitional regimes, okay. And also there's another thing called entrance flow and fully developed flow. So for this, I'll put a link, but I have a video. It's called C video 11.1. .1. 11 is the viscous flow in pipes, so it makes sense that I discussed it over there. So the laminar, turbulent, and transitional discussed entrance flow and fluid developed flow is very important. In the undergraduate class, what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume fluid developed flow. Okay. So it's important to know what we're talking about when I say, okay, I am solving the velocity profile in a pipe, but I'm assuming fully developed flow, okay? Just an important thing over here is if I have, let's say that the flow is in this direction, and that's, let's say, x, whatever the uh, coordinate is, is constant is what is going to happen, okay? This is important, fully developed flow. So the LP, the, the LX will be 5, 10, 20. Uh, just hang on a second though. It's going to be a negative value if, I, if this is a pipe because the pressure reduces in the flow of direction, so it's going to be a negative value. 